Okay, so without using a calculator, let's see if you can check this work. So I'm asking you, is this math problem correct? So we have the square root of 8 times the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 8 times the square root of 2. So is the answer 1? So obviously the correct uh, answer to this question is either yes or no. But uh, you really want to kind of do the problem yourself. In other words, just forget about the 1 here and see what the correct answer is and then see if indeed it is equal to 1. Now, if you think you actually know the answer and you can back up your conclusions, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then as I go through the video, I'm going to tell you the actual answer to this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, we have the square root of 8 times the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 8 times the square root of 2. Now, if you're thinking, well, this thing, whatever the answer here, is the same as this answer, so anything divided by itself is 1, well, that's pretty good logic. Unfortunately, that is wrong in terms of this problem. So this is not correct. The answer to this problem is not 1. So no, this is not right. But what is the correct answer? Well, I'm going to show you this in just one second. But if you knew this was wrong, I'm definitely going to give you a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what is the right answer? Well, let's see all this math right now. So to get the right answer to this problem, you're going to need to understand these two math skills really well. And the first is the order of operations. And I'm going to talk about that in just one second because the correct order of operations in math is this little acronym right here called PEMDAS. This tells us the correct order of operations. Now, this is one skill that you need to have. The other skill is you need to know how to work with square roots in terms of how to multiply and divide square roots. And I'll show you that as we get into the solution. But uh, let's just review the proper order of operations here because this is really critical. So anytime you have a math problem, with more than one operation, and a mathematical operator is things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, etc. We need to follow the correct order. If not, we will get the wrong answer. And I can assure you, a lot of you got the wrong answer because you did not know the correct order of operations as well as you probably thought. Okay, so this is a checklist that goes from left to right, and I'm going to quickly go through this. So P stands for parentheses or grouping symbols. So if you have any numbers um, inside of grouping symbols, brackets like this, or parentheses, i.e. if we had like 2 times 3 in parentheses plus 1, the first thing that we would do in this problem is whatever is in the parentheses. Okay, so that is what P stands for in the order of operations. Okay, so here... You can see our problem, we don't have any parentheses, but I want to review the entire order of operations so you understand this. Now, E stands for exponents, but it really means power. So like 2 to the third power. So this little 3 up here is an exponent. This 2 down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. Now, this is a very interesting part of this problem because if you have like the square root of 16, times 2, for example, this square root right here is actually an exponent. So you might be wondering, why is that? Well, the square root uh, in mathematics is the same thing as taking something to the 1 half power. So if you have the square root of 16, this is equal to 16 to the 1 half power. And here we have an exponent. So at this step, if there was something simple that we could evaluate, like the square root of 16, we would be able to take it. But here, you can see we have the square root of 8, square root of 2. These are decimal uh, values. In other words, we call these irrational numbers. So we're not going to kind of uh, do anything with these square roots. But just to be super clear here, if I had the square root of 16 times 2, I would evaluate this first. 
Okay, so that is what E stands for. Now here is a very interesting part of the order of operations. So M, D, A, and S, M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S stands for subtraction. Now a lot of people are probably thinking, well, the next thing here on the checklist is M, so we're gonna do all multiplication next. Well, that is not the way this works. And this is a very confused part of the order of operations. So really, uh, the next step is any multiplication or division, and we're going to do whatever we see first from left to right. Okay, so if we have multiplication, then division, we're going to do that. But if we have division, then multiplication, we're going to do this. So this is what the M and D stand for. And then A and S stands for addition and subtraction. Again, whatever we see first from left to right. So now that we understand the correct order of operations, we can just follow our PEMDAS checklist to see what is the first step. So do we have any parentheses? No, we do not have any parentheses or grouping symbols. Do we have any exponents or powers? Well, technically we do, but we don't have anything simple like the square root of 16 to simplify. So uh, we're going to move on to the next thing, and that is multiplication and division. So indeed, we have multiplication and division. And what do we see first from left to right? Well, we see this multiplication right here. So this is our first step. So we have the square root of 8 times the square root of 2. So we need to figure out the answer here as step number 1. Now, how do you multiply two square roots? Well, this is very, very easy. What we can do is multiply the numbers underneath the square roots and write that under one big square root symbol. So the square root of 8 times the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 8 times 2. So let's go ahead and continue to uh, figure out what this is. So the square root of 8 uh, times 2, or the square root of 8 times 2, is now the square root of 16. So now we have the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 8 times the square root of 2. So again, we're just still focusing in on that first step. So now at this point, we do um, have an exponent, right? So this is something that we can simplify. So the square root of 16 is 4. So now we're down to this, 4 divided by the square root of 8 times the square root of 2. So I hope you're learning something from this video. And if that's the case, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. This really does help me out on YouTube. Now, if you need additional help in math, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get back to the problem. So now we continue to look at our PEMDAS checklist to figure out the next move. So we don't have any parentheses and the exponents are things that we can uh, simplify some of these square roots. But I'm going to get back to this E here in just one second. Now let's continue to focus on multiplication and division. Now remember, uh, you're going to do whatever you see first from left to right. So the answer here, when we took the square root of 16, that was 4. So our problem now is 4 divided by the square root of 8 times 2. So what do we see first from left to right? We see division. So now we need to figure out what 4 divided by the square root of 8 is before we do this multiplication. But uh, here is where we're going to use a little trick. So instead of uh, 4 divided by the square root of 8, so here we have 4 divided by the square root of 8, well, we can make this problem a lot easier. Now, the way we can do that is instead of writing 4, let's go ahead and express 4 as the square root of 16. Okay, so we're going to kind of reverse this step right here. And instead of simplifying it, we're going to leave it as the square root of 16, and you're going to see why in just one second. Okay, so now we have the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 8. So now we need to understand another simple property of square roots. So anytime you are dividing square roots, very much like when you are multiplying square roots, we can express uh, the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 8 this way, the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 8, but we can write these numbers here, the numerator and uh, the denominator, or excuse me, uh, 16 is the numerator, 8 is the denominator, we can write these uh, this fraction under one big square root. 
So the square root of 16 over the square root of uh, 8 is equal to the square root of 16 divided by 8. So what is 16 divided by 8? Well, that's 2. So really, the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 8 is equal to the square root of 2. So all of this right here is equal to the square root of 2. And now we're down to the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. So we are almost done here. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, remember, when you want to multiply square roots, all we have to do is multiply the numbers underneath the square roots and write that under one big square root symbol. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2, which is the correct answer. So 1 is not correct, although, again, it's uh, very uh, deceiving to see how you know someone could see 1 as being the correct answer. But, you know, if you really do know the order of operations and how to work with square roots, you can determine that indeed the valid or the correct answer here is 2. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.